Yeah, there are quite a lot of like differences and like some similarities too. Well, speaking of food, like I think it's quite, it's not like the same, obviously, but it's, it's similar. Like they, Cambodian people actually eat a lot of fish and well, Japanese people eat a lot of fish too. So it was really kind of, it was actually easy for easier for me, I think, like to adjust like Cambodian like this kind of like cuisine or Cambodian like eating culture because like their main like well they mainly eat rice and like you know in Japan it's the same and I know that some of my companions like American companions like were kind of struggling like you know having like rice like every day <laughs> and but I loved it <laughs> and but. I think that people were really different. I think like the living style, our living styles are quite different, I believe. Um, because I think that Cambodian people are more kind of open to their neighbors. And like they always, so they have like their houses like having, well, if they have like kind of quite nice, nice houses, like they have this kind of gate gates like in front of their houses and like they usually open it like when they are whenever they are at home and so that they can welcome actually neighbors and like other people coming in and like I have like a lot of experiences that's like those like people like we were contacting that you know they just like welcome to us and like oh yeah you can come in and sit <laughs> and like have a seat there like we can chat and like that's really nice and but yeah it it will be really hard back in Japan too like because like people are really like busy and like they have they have their kind of individual lives and, like I know that they still have like this kind of community like you know and like connection with like people in neighbor but that will be probably pretty different and yeah like both of like them have like kind of like bigger religious background as Buddhism but they have different like you know different kinds of Buddhism like in Cambodia and like in Japan and like in Japan like it's more kind of Buddhism like it's becoming like really more culture like oh yeah it's kind of like tradition like it's really like Japanese like kind of cultural religion I don't know how to say it, but um, but in Cambodia, like still a lot of people, like over ninety percent of like actually like population is Buddhist, and they're actually like observing it like really well. Like they like a lot of people still like go to like the, their Buddhism temples and like you know they celebrate like their kind of. But it's kind of holidays and celebrations like kind of more strictly than what Japanese people do so that that's what's the difference too. I think a lot of it stems from we were talking about Pol Pot and what happened in the 70s you know he came through it was just a mass genocide you know he just, they killed millions of people anyone who could read had glasses, they were killing baby, like babies, it was really bad. Just millions of people and so, and that was just a few decades ago. So it really just kind of threw them back hundreds of years, you know, in terms of progression and everything. But but they say, you know, when, when you've hit rock bottom, it's only up from there, you know. So we've got this humble people that are just so hardworking, so kind and so humble, you know. They're really nice. Um, I'd say the overall average, you know, like obviously literacy rates can be down because of that. But um, the people are, I would just say they're really, um, really friendly. Like you can just go and make friends with any of them. They would just be more than happy to be your friend, you know. And uh, yeah, I miss them. <laughs> they're really, really fun. They're really good sense of humor. Like if you learn any of their language, they'll, they'll just think you're the coolest, you know. Like even just saying, you know, Jimbarupsu, saying hello to them, they'd, they'd be stoked. Yeah, it's fun. So the people there are very, very friendly. I loved serving in Cambodia because the people there are so receptive. Even though they may not even want to listen to what you have to say, they just want to be friends with you. Maybe that's just partly because 
were American or were not from Cambodia and they haven't had much interaction with foreigners speaking their own language, but I think they genuinely love other people. They have the, abil they have the ability to make friendships very easily. So it's very easy to enter people's homes, be able to talk to them and have long, even intimate conversations with them. And they're very open about these things. They're also very funny. They're very humorous. They're very open, even if they're having dinner and we sort of walk by their house, they might call us in and say, hey, come eat with us. And we, of course, are like, no, 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 maybe, maybe another time, but maybe we could give you something like a pamphlet or maybe a flyer for English class or maybe a little pass along card or something. And so it's very easy to contact people, but yet again, it's sort of hard to get investigators out of it because they're very Buddhist. They're very culturally, they have very strong cultural and family connections. Family there is very, very important. So another problem there about joining the church is there might be family opposition from their parents or even their grandparents. They might be adults, but still they might decline to be baptized because the grandma said no. So their family connections, that's something that we could build on because we teach that families will be able to be together forever. And even though the members are very poor, I still knew quite a few of them who had been, who were able to sacrifice the money to be able to go to the Hong Kong or Manila Philippines temple so they could be an eternal family. So usually family units, they live all together and that includes maybe three generations. So it's very easy to connect to both the grandparents, the parents and the children. So that's one thing I love about Cambodian culture is their emphasis on family. And it also makes them cause, it also causes them to always remember their families. Often, especially among young people, usually in their 20s, they often leave their hometown or their rice field or wherever they're from, their little village, and they go to Phnom Penh, which is the capital city, to try to find work, which is usually pretty hard. They usually try to find work doing factory work, or maybe they ride people around on their motorcycle and try to be a motorcycle taxi guy. Some of them might work in restaurants or, or maybe they try to sell at the market or do other things. Even though they're alone, they're not with their family members, they constantly remember their family. Like every other month, they're always trying to go back and forth between their hometown and the city, which also causes a lot of problems in missionary work is because sometimes we try to meet with a lot of these people a lot of the investigators that we have are usually in this age range, usually like 18 to 30 single. So we try to meet with them and all of a sudden, without a moment's notice, they're already gone and they went back to their homeland. And we don't know if they're going to be gone for six hours or for a day, a week or a month, or if they're never going to come back. So they're always thinking about their family. They're always trying to support their family. So many of them work very hard doing very hard, arduous jobs in order to support their families. So that explains, I would say, many of the Khmer people. Cambodians are also known as Khmer's, by the way. But some of them, I would say, are actually quite lazy, like to sleep a lot of time. Cambodians love to sleep. Like, usually, they will go to bed at 8 or 9, just so they're able to sleep even more. And they'll Go to, they'll take a nap in the middle of the day, like at one to three, just so they're able to sleep even more. So they love to sleep. And they also love to eat. Food is something very important to their culture. 